live from the Oracle Conference Center in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's theCUBE, covering the Oracle Cloud Launch, brought to you by Oracle. Now your host, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angles program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante here at the Oracle Cloud Platform launch, getting ready for the folks to roll in the press, Larry Ellison and folks who are just doing the pre-event interviews. We'll also have some events during kind of halftime, I guess, during the break, and then also at the end. Uh, our next guest is, is uh, Rajiv Sethi, who's the JDSU Senior Director of IT Applications. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Um, so, Oracle, talk, talk, talk about the cloud. What are you guys doing with them? And how does that relate to you guys, you know, have your own stuff, your own solutions, own hardware, own software. How is Oracle involved in your business and how are you rolling them out? So at JDSU, we have 25% of our applications that are already in the cloud. So um, some, a lot of our applications are, uh, Oracle is a key partner for us. We are running Oracle EBS, Agile PLM, Demandra, we have databases, we have custom applications built using Oracle uh, technology, databases, and the WebLogic server out there. Java? Uh, Java, and okay. then we also use uh, heavily the SOA Suite platform, Oracle SOA Suite platform. So we are a, a, a very heavy user of Oracle technology. Across a lot of tiers. A lot of, all the application functions out there, mm -hmm. um, out there. And um, so it's pretty. What's your experience with Oracle Cloud? Um, <laughs> we have uh, we have implemented Oracle HCM, the SaaS application. So JDSU about nine months back decided to uh, split into two companies called Lumentum and Viavi Solutions. Uh, for the folks who might not know, uh, about a nine months period, we need to uh, stand up a spin off a, a different company, a, a billion dollar company. Uh, with its own systems, an independently publicly traded company, that is what we are. We have been marching towards. So we needed to consolidate some of our applications, simplify, modernize, and also migrate all our applications capability onto onto a new environment. So we started with uh, leveraging Oracle Managed Services to uh, put all our EBS and Agile platform on that, and with uh, with Oracle uh, HCM, Teleo. Uh, we are consolidating some of our point solutions which are on-premise and on, on cloud into the overall OCM platform out there. So standing up a billion dollar business here and there, it sounds like a big deal with a weekend job, you know, have a hackathon, <laughs> throw up a platform as a service, sounds easy, right? <laughs> That's, this is the whole thing that we've been talking about on theCUBE is that it's really hard. You have a lot of moving parts. This is the professionalization era of the cloud. We're seeing that. I mean, Amazon, I mean, I used to joke about Amazon, and I have now respect for them because we use them, as the junkyard dog of cloud. You make your own pieces and you be a hobbyist, get saved some costs, and a lot of the web scale companies and startups do that because it's a no-brainer. When you start getting into billion dollar businesses, with a lot of intricacies and business processes, this is kind of where the professional is. So, what is that full service cloud mean to you? I mean, as a customer of Oracle who's saying they're providing full service. Yeah, so full service, running our applications on, on a platform, integrating those applications, because not one, cell, one application can deliver all the capabilities, say, for a billion dollar company. Uh, so how do we integrate those applications? How do we run our dev test environments? How do we scale it? So we are leveraging a lot of Oracle uh, platforms now, the Oracle um, database and the Java cloud. Uh, where we are looking at moving our dev test workloads because in a very short period of time, we needed to stand up um, our new environment. So how do we stand up dev test environment to test all the applications out there? So we are using that. So I'm interested in why Oracle Cloud, obviously an Oracle shop, that's yeah. a big reason, but, but did you look at other you know, solutions? What did you evaluate? Why did you end up here? Yeah, so I think so multiple reasons. We are not 100% all Oracle. We use Salesforce, we use a lot of other platforms mm -hmm. out there. Um, we felt Oracle in certain areas where it could give us benefit because we were already using WebLogic server and database server on-prem. So for us to go onto the cloud was a very easy uh, task because A, from a resources point of view, skills point of view, I don't have the luxury to go and acquire more skills and more resources in ID to, to keep on learning all the new technology. So my current resource pool could easily uh, leverage the Oracle Cloud Platform for some of these capabilities we were looking at. So SOA was kind of how you did integration, you know, historically, right? Yeah. And, 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 but it, it didn't give you the scale of the cloud 
potentially, right? So what's different now with, with cloud and middleware and the PaaS layer than what you were able to achieve with SOA? So, yeah, so for the SOA side, we have we are, uh, the integration cloud services is a very easy point and click to integrate, especially the applications in the cloud for us. So we have SaaS to SaaS, like Salesforce to um, uh, HCM, our employee data we need to move, some training data we need to move from, um, uh, from Teleo into Salesforce from on-premise Oracle EBS running R12 to HCM uh, cloud. So those kind of integrations, we have started putting onto the integration cloud services out there. We feel that that is very point to click. I don't have to, again, uh, from IT perspective, it's all about the yeah. platform, the resources, the skills. Uh, with the integration cloud service, I don't need that now a dedicated SOA intermediate person to be part of the team to build the integration. So how does your operating model change? You got an API that allows you access into these services and that allows you to scale. I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Sure, uh, so we have been building some of the APIs, some, uh, some of the key uh, objects like customer contacts, employee data, some of those and which uh, through the integration cloud services we are exposing to some of the on-prem application and on the cloud application. So how do you decide, well you said 25% of your apps are in the cloud, how do you decide what's in the cloud? Or do you, everybody talks about how easy it is, point, push a button and move stuff. <laughs> what's actually happening? First of all, how do you decide what goes in the cloud and what stays on premises? And do you actually move stuff in and out? Um, so uh, traditionally, a lot of application, a lot of point solution where business needed some agility, some quickly, some wins out there, we ended up going, we've, we always look at it what we have on the platform today available, whether it's Oracle EBS or any other platform we have out there. Uh, then strategically we started looking at all the other capabilities which business needed uh, to, to scale or, or through acquisitions, a lot of these uh, capabilities were rolled out in the cloud because the cloud is giving the agility. We are experimenting with some solutions out in there in the cloud because it is easy for us to go get up, up and running. We don't have to make big investment in the infrastructure up front. And then it's, we are looking at as a pay per use uh, model out there so that we can, uh, if we stop using some capability, we can then over a period of time discontinuing that particular service. So, Cloud has been our integral part of our strategy for last three years, and we have been very um, fortunate that some of our decisions which we made, because cloud also, a lot of vendors are changing. It is not easy to integrate, but it is. Uh, there are a lot of good uh, capabilities available which we can now bring into our portfolio and make it available for business to scale up. So my, my other question is on moving workload. So obviously test dev, you do a yeah. lot of test dev, I'm sure, in the cloud. Yeah. You're moving from test dev, maybe into production. Uh, what about other workloads? Uh, are you moving workloads and why? So uh, one of the areas where we have been looking at moving some of the workloads is in the BI space. Uh, uh, especially like quarter end, year end, there is a lot of reporting capability, data, where, uh, data required to make last minute decisions, what deals are getting closed, what is getting shipped. So we are looking at it where we can now scale, um, especially our BI platform for peak loads during that period of period. One is that, and the second thing is that a lot of dashboarding and uh, reporting capability, um, traditionally we have seen that ID manages the data warehouse, gives one to like OBIE which we use, uh, but every business users, they come from different background, they have different kind of bring your own device, bring your own tool kind of a mentality is there. So for that point of view, we are looking at how we can now give BI cloud services as a platform to our business users where they can quickly upload like a spreadsheet where they have data and disparate, and they, because business tries to keep the data with them, certain data which they want to use for reporting. Mm -hmm. And that is not easily you can pump into the data warehouse. Rajiv, so my, my final question for you is, as you have the on-premise cloud migration, What's the developer plan for you guys? You guys have a lot going on, broad requirements. What's the developer investment look like? How's that roadmap tie in with cloud? Because with analytics and the value being on the app side, sure. you got to have a whole new transformation on investment and also personnel and also what languages, obviously Java, we all know. That's an Oracle thing right now and that's cool, Java standard. But you got Node, you got Angular, and all kinds of new languages emerging besides you know, Ruby, et cetera. Yeah, so but that's, a, that's a great question because we keep on 
retooling our environment and also we need to build our skills, our, our my team skills to able to keep up with the technology out there. So stand designing on a platform like Oracle which runs on premise and moving it also some of these things into cloud, there is very less amount of uh, I have to retrain my team or go and hire my additional skills out there, so that is different. Final, final question, I guess I had one more question, so <laughs> this is, I'm known for throwing another final question out there. Roadmap for other customers that are going down the journey. You have a very extensive experience with the Oracle three tiers and other, uh, in a multi-vendor environment, obviously is your stuff as well. What's your advice to other CIOs and other people in the field trying to get their arms around this and operationalizing cloud? Definitely, look at your entire ecosystem, see how it can simplify, modernize, because some of our applications we are using for last 15, 20 years, which was never enabled for mobile. They were never, there was no technology at that time which we thought about that we'll be using. So we are using a lot of still applications. So think from that point of view. Cloud gives you a lot of capability out there to modernize it, and then you can definitely consolidate some of the applications, and integration is a key piece to all this. Okay, since I got you here, final, final question. What do you think of containers and Docker? DockerCon's going on, we have theCUBE up in San Francisco. This notion of containers, orchestration, a whole new way to write apps. Your thoughts, quickly? Um, they are a good way to experiment and build, but if you look at it from an um, uh, enterprise application point of view, when you want a corporate-wide, you need to standardize on the platform. But you definitely want to uh, leverage some of this new te 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 technology to experiment in areas where you want to get into the leading edge. So we have started doing some of those areas. Rajiv Sethi, standing up billion dollar businesses, um, dealing with the cloud, this is not a trivial task. Thank you for sharing your insights here on theCUBE. We are pre-gaming the Larry Ellison keynote. This is theCUBE pre-event coverage. We'll be right back more after this short break. <laughs>